Hello and welcome back. This is Greg French. Uh, we're going over hardware on uh, this segment, uh, lesson uh, 1-3 of the computer repair training series. I want to draw your attention again to the computer repair training plus, uh, dot com website where you'll find some additional resources. Motherboard components used for communication among devices. Traces. Traces on the motherboard or any circuit card uh, can be either data paths or power. These are small or, or very thin copper foil uh, paths that move data around the board or power. Usually the data is in a group of probably eight, at least eight lines and they're very small where the power lines are generally a little bit larger. But if you ever get your hands on a board, you can turn it over and use it on the back side. You can see these lines. Data bus uh, is a bus that carries data. It can be either 8, 16, 32, 64, or 128 bits wide. We'll talk more about that. Main bus. The main bus or system bus uh, and memory bus. Communications with the CPU, memory, and chipset. So this is a pretty important bus because all the important or all the fast uh, data is moved from the memory bus through the chipset. Uh, system clock uh, pulse carried by a line on the motherboard. Now, the system clock is real important because that is the clock pulse that everything needs in order to synchronize with the CPU. Now, this is a diagram of the Intel Extreme. There's some things I want to point out on here. We've talked in the last lesson about the North Bridge and the South Bridge. And we said that the North Bridge connects to the video on the left here and to the RAM memory on the right. The South Bridge connects to everything else. But I want you to look at the bandwidth here. We've got 8 gigabytes per second bandwidth for the video card coming into this north bridge. And then we have a front side bus going to the CPU that's 8 gigabytes wide. So theoretically, this 8 gigabytes could pretty much saturate that front side bus. But then we have another 10.7 gigabytes over here that would easily saturate that bus. And then plus another 2 gigabytes coming down here from the south bridge. So if we take 10 and 2 and 12 and 8, that's 20.7. So we could easily overrun this bus. But I want you to look at the new i7 core bus. Here we've got two processors. We've got memory on this side and memory on this side. The bandwidth for this triple channel memory is 32 gigabits per second. We have another one over here, 32 gigabits per second. So that memory bandwidth is huge. Let's go back to other diagram. You notice here's the memory, it's 10.7. So we're going from 10.7 to 32, almost three times the bandwidth just for the memory that feeds the processor. And we also have a bus inside here, which is our like our front side bus that takes care of everything else, video and everything else on the board. It's 25 gigabytes per second wide. Go back to the other diagram. The video on here was only eight gigabytes. So we've got three times the bandwidth for also the video card. So this i i7 core is a huge improvement uh, for performance for the computer and it's really helping us to move to the next level. Motherboard components used for communication among devices. Uh, clock speed is measured in hertz, cycles per second. One megahertz, that's one million cycles per second. One gigahertz, that's a billion cycles per second. It's pretty phenomenal how fast these computers run. Common ratings for motherboard buses, uh, 1066, 800. These are some of the older ratings. Uh, we're seeing things uh, improving. Uh, range of CPU speeds, uh, 166 megahertz to 4 gigahertz. Uh, buses for expansion slots, PCIe, PCI, AGP, and ISA. ISA is pretty old. Uh, here is a comparison of the PCI slots and the new PCIe slots. And you notice the PCIe slots are much shorter than the PCI slots, but look at the bandwidth. Bandwidth on the PCI was 133 megabytes per second, or a million bytes per second. The new small PCI slots are 500, about three times again, the bandwidth just in these little slots. Interface expansion cards. Now, these are cards that plug into the motherboard in these slots that I just showed you. So circuit cards, adapter ports, expansion cards. Cards connect uh, the CPU to an external device. Video provides a port to the monitor. Sound provides ports for speakers and microphones. Network provides a port for the network cable. Modem provides ports uh, for the phone lines. 
Uh, determine a card's function by identifying the port. If you look on the back of a card, you'll see the port, and the ports are very easily identified. Uh, monitor port would have 15 pins. Uh, serial port might only be only 9 pins or 25 pins, but they're all very unique. Here is uh, two uh, NIC cards, uh, network interface cards. One is the PCI on the left, and on the right we have the PCIe. And you can see the smaller connection for the, for the PCIe, and it has higher bandwidth again, almost three times. Electrical system, power supply, most important electrical component. Power supplies have had to be increased in the ratings quite a bit. Uh, consequently, they're becoming more vulnerable, and we're seeing more power supply failures. I would always get a power supply that's probably about twice as big as you need. If you need a 400 watt, I'd go up to about a 6 or an 800 watt. Uh, you just need that protection. You don't want the power supply to fail. Um, converts AC uh, voltage to DC. Uh, DC is what all the components in the computer need. Nothing needs AC. We, AC is alternating. We need direct current. Uh, we reduce our voltages from 110, 120 from our lines to 12 volts or less. If you ever see, it's probably 240, just down to 12 volts. Runs a fan to uh, cool the inside of the computer case. Also, there's a fan on top of the CPU. Temperatures, 185 degrees, uh, can cause component failure. So we're keeping that temperature a lot lower than that. Things age very quickly when they get hot. Motherboard has one or two connections for the power supply. Uh, here's an older style, P8 and P9. Here's our, our newer style, P1 connector. In review, uh, CPU speeds, megahertz and gigahertz. A megahertz is a million hertz per second. Gigahertz is a billion hertz per second. Data bus and data speeds, we talked about that. Bus watt widths can be 8, 16, uh, 32, 64, or 128 bits wide. Uh, and the speeds can vary quite a bit. System clock, now that's the clock that synchronizes everything on the, on the computer. Everything ha needs that, that sync uh, pulse that comes from the system clock. Expansion cards. We have the new ones, the PCI Express, much more bandwidth. AGP was our older video uh, slot or card. Uh, and then PCI. These are these are old, but we're still using them. Power supply supplies the power for everything on the computer. Activity. I want you to sketch the motherboard and identify the CPU, the chipset, memory, and expansion card slots. And I want you to show me the bandwidth. Give me an idea what the bandwidth is between those components. Everything needs to be related back to bandwidth. That, that uh, From the bandwidth, we can understand how the, what the performance of the computer will be. I want you to do Labs 1.3. Use shareware to examine uh, a computer. You'll be able to get a lot of information using the shareware. Uh, I want you to answer some questions, turn them in. Also, Lab 1.4, I want you to use sh uh, shareware again to examine the computer. Uh, there's a couple of different sharewares that you're going to be using. You'll see some differences between the two. Uh, thank you very much for your time. That's it.